In this video, I'm going to show you a very cool attacking game played in the German Bundesliga, the German Team Championship. And it's a game between top player from Iran, Parham Mahsodlu, playing with the wide pieces against Austria's number one, Markus Ragar. And you've got many reasons to, uh, to watch this game. It's a crushing mating attack. It's a miniature game under 25 moves. So it's really short and, uh, and sweet. And at the same time, you're going to learn a lot, not only how to build up the attack, but also how to ensure that the opponent, the defender, is not uh, able to uh, set up a good defense. You're going to eliminate the defenders, and Mahsodlu does that in a very impressive way. So let's have a look. Make sure to subscribe to the channel, of course. So now we are ready to go. It's uh, 1d4, and we get to see one of the sharpest opening lines out there one of the most popular openings at uh, at the very top the uh, grunfeld defense the uh, good old favorite of players like bobby fischer gary kasparov also magnus carlsen has played it many times many other players as well and we get to see one of the main lines so we are going for the exchange variation so white gets a very nice center and the pawns in the center on d4 and e4 are nicely supported by the pawn on c3. And black's task here is to challenge it as quickly as possible. So white goes for the setup with a bishop on c4. Black goes c5, challenging the pawn. White goes knight e2, castling kingside. And so does white, knight c6, bishop e3. This has all been seen hundreds, thousands of times at, um, at many different levels. Um, there are various good moves for, uh, for black. Um, bishop g4 has been seen, bishop d7, queen c7, b6, they're all sort of main lines. But here, Markus Rugger, he's uh, one of the leading experts on the on the Grunfeld um, in, uh, in these days. He's going for the setup with e6. It's um, a modest move, but it kind of anticipates white from advancing the d-pawn anytime to, uh, to d5. But now, after having played the move e6, white changes its mind and captures the pawn on c5. So... Here we get an interesting uh, structure in which white has double pawns on the c file, but it will not be easy for black to uh, to regain the pawn uh, at all. One of the drawbacks now is that you give away square. So white center is no longer that powerful. Black goes for the move knight e5, attacking the uh, the bishop on uh, on c4, and with this open d file, of course, there is this question: which side is going to um, to initiate the exchange of queens. Black could have done it already on the previous move, but I think neither side is really inclined giving up the control over the uh, over the open file. So white drops back with the bishop to, uh, to b3, and now queen a5 played. So avoiding the exchange of queens, and you're ready to go rook d8 to attack the queen on, uh, on d1. But here white goes for the move f4, and I think we are already at the critical uh, moment in the opening, as black got to make a decision what to do with its knight. Well, in fact, Marcus Rucker didn't uh, move its knight uh, yet. He played here to move rook d8 with a counterattack on the queen. But I think it's a mistake, and uh, it's not an obvious mistake at all. But probably it would have been better to just drop back with a knight to d7, to attack the pawn on c5, trying to regain the pawn immediately. And okay, white is looking for ways to, to generate some activity with its pawns on the, on the king side. I think black didn't want to play this because of the move queen d6, so that you're protecting the pawn and it will be hard to regain the pawn. But the key move now is knight f6. You're attacking the pawn on e4, and there's no convenient way of uh, defending the pawn, because if you play e5, horrible mistake, it's rook d8, and the queen is just going to be trapped. If you go queen e7, it's rook d7, and the queen cannot go anywhere. Could be that Marcus Rucker just forgot his home preparation at this point, and he played the, the obvious move, rook d8. But the drawback of this move is that the queen slides over to e1. The queen is doing very well here, because now black got to move its knight. It's still under threat by the f-pawn. Knight comes into d3, attacks the queen... But the queen comes over to h4. So white's queen joins the attack really fast. Knight takes c5. Black has won its pawn back. But you can see he has invested a lot of time for uh, for doing so. And um, okay, now things are, are getting sharper. I, 
I should point out that the queen on h4 is keeping an eye on this rook. It's still defended by the queen. Queen also has a defensive task of supporting the knight on c5. However, bishop takes c5 is not a good move because queen takes c5 is possible. There's no time for white to take the rook on the 8 because the black queen is giving a check on, uh, on c5. But it's a very important feature of, of this position. But instead, white goes for the attack now with the move f5. And that's a really powerful move with the idea of activating the rook by opening up the f-file and imagine the pawn on e6 would not be there. This bishop uh, gains in strength a lot. For instance, if you would take the pawn on f5, now queen e7 is a really powerful move. Attacking everything, the pawn on f7, the knight on c5 is attacked twice. And for instance, if you would take on b3, there's a takes b3, and now the queen on a5 is in trouble. It cannot go anywhere without giving up the support of that rook on d8. Intermediate move bishop f8 runs into queen sacrifice, queen takes f8, check. If you take back the queen on a5 is hanging, that's game over. So after f5, black, instead of taking the pawn on f5, took first on b3. Eliminating important attacker. But after a takes b3, he's got to move the queen. The queen went back to c7. And it looks as if black is doing still okay. But white is really fast. Played here the move rook a d1. Trying to gain control over the open file. Putting pressure on that rook on d8. And um, well, there are some, some problems here for, uh, for black. You got to make a decision what to do with the rook. If you take on d1, white is going to recapture. And uh, now you're not in time to complete your development with bishop d7. It allows queen e7 and you're completely stuck. This bishop can't go anywhere. Rook d8, bishop g5. That's uh, that's game over. So black came up with an um, another move, moved this rook away to, uh, to e8. Should be said though that a move like rook d7 may have been a, a better option, but it looks really artificial to uh, place your rook on the square where the bishop could have gone to. Anyway, let's have a look at the game. Rook e8, and now white goes f6, no longer opening up the f-file, but there are different attacking ideas. First, the bishop got to move, it went to f8, and now white's main strategy of making a successful attack out of it is to get rid of that bishop. But you've got to be very precise in your timing because if you go bishop h6 right away, after bishop takes h6, queen takes h6, you're threatening mate, but black is in time to play queen c5 check. White got to do something about the check and on the next move, the queen comes to f8, offering the exchange of queens while guarding the g7 square. So bishop h6 is premature, but look, now you understand that the move king h1 is a very useful move because you're preparing this bishop h6 idea without giving black the opportunity to make use of the c5 square with tempo. So black is not able to bring its queen into defense. Now, black is still behind in development. Got to make a decision how to proceed. For instance, the most obvious move, bishop d7, trying to finally get your remaining piece into the game, runs into bishop h6. And you're no longer able to put your queen on c5 and guard the g7 square. Because if you do so, the bishop on d7 is hanging. So black is in trouble. Black played the move a5. Now you may think, what's the idea behind this move? Well, you're trying to find an alternative way for your uh, rook to, to join play. So white went... For the move rook d3, very nice attacking idea. Rook lift along the third rank. If the rook comes to h3, there's also a mating threat on h7. So white is combining ideas against the pawn on h7 as well as the g7 uh, square. Important moment, what, uh, what should black do? Black played here the move e5, very understandable to uh, gain control over the h3 square. But... Um, it's difficult. I thought that a4 is a more logical move with the idea to generate counterplay. And who knows, maybe at some point the rook can even come via a5 to, uh, to h5. But the position 
remains very, very unpleasant. White has the move Bishop h6. With ideas to go Rook h3 next. The Knight can come to f4. It's better for White with, uh, with precise play. So probably there was something Black didn't like here. Instead played here the move e5. Trying to free its Bishop from c8. But now Bishop h6 is played anyway. And this is also very interesting because why... Bishop h6 is played now. Well, if you would play here queen c5, having played this pawn to e5, the d5 square has become vulnerable. And rook d5 is a fantastic idea to deflect the defender. The queen wants to stay in touch with the bishop on f8. But if you play here queen a3 to keep the bishop defended, white has the beautiful interference motive b4. Disconnecting the queen from the bishop, closing the diagonal, and whatever happens next, there is bishop takes f8, followed by queen h6, and it's game over. It's going to be checkmate in a few moves. So after bishop h6, there follow the move bishop to c5. And after bishop c5, now the bishop comes in to g7. How beautiful is this? I mean, you try to make space for your queen. Ideally, you would get your queen to that square. But now you put a bishop there, so the black king is kind of made it without a check. So just giving a check, it's almost checkmate. Let's let's have a look. For instance, now if if you're playing a random move, let's say black continues with the plan on the queen side with, with a4, then my plan is to get a rook over to a3. So the key move is g4. So this bishop no longer guards the h3 square. And after, let's say, pawn takes pawn, it's the queen sacrifice, queen takes h7. This is a very typical idea, which is, has been made possible thanks to the bishop on g7. After king takes queen, it's rook check, king to g8, and it's checkmate in the corner. Beautiful cooperation. These three pieces are helping each other for checkmating the black king. Now, instead of a4, black play the move queen c6. And it's very clear that if you play here g4 now, it's queen takes e4, and all of a sudden you're having a big problem here as white because the queen is giving a check and uh, the attack is coming to an end. But let's take it back. Let's pause here for a second. We understand that the main defender is this bishop on c8. And if this bishop would not be there, then we have similar mating ideas with the queen sacrifice we have seen before. How to eliminate a defender? Well, we cannot trade it off. But fortunately, we can make an interference sacrifice. With this move, rook f5, white closes the diagonal so the bishop no longer covers the h3 square. For instance, if you would take the rook, I'm not going to sacrifice my queen, but I will play here to move rook h3, and there's nothing black can do against queen takes h7 with checkmate. That's it. If you... Play another move like bishop takes f5. I'm just going to take first the bishop. You're an exchange down. But the threat of queen takes h7 is still there. If you try to stop it with the move h5, white has the move queen g5. And black can absolutely do nothing against the threat of queen h6 followed by queen h8. And it's going to be checkmate in the corner. Also, it's very nice that the rook is on d3. So that if you go rook d8... Uh, let's say you, you play rook d8 here. I'm going to play queen h6 and you're not capturing the rook with check. The, there's no time to reach white's back rank. Whatever happens, it's queen h8 with checkmate on the next move. So it's, it's just game over. Black resigned after this spectacular move. Rook f5. Of course, you can only find these moves when you are trying to understand what the opponent is intending to do. Which pieces are still preventing you from carrying out the mating attack. Once you understand that, rook f5 is a move which speaks for itself. One more line, by the way, if you try to play h5 uh, here so that queen takes uh, h7 um, is not a, not a threat, then it's just rook takes h5, g takes h5, queen takes h5, and it's also checkmate in the corner. So I thought this was a really spectacular game. 2600 plus player getting blown off the board by Mach Sodlu in very cool attacking style. And I hope... You agree with me, this was a very instructive attacking game. Of, of course, much more attacking games will be covered on the channel. So make sure to subscribe and come back. You will not be disappointed. See you soon again. Bye-bye.